Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season finale of My Adventures with Superman. Great season finale. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, obviously Clark, especially after the last two episodes, is having this, well, specifically after seeing everything last episode, but it really kind of got him questioning a lot about his purpose on this planet of like, I wasn't sent here to be this planet's savior. I was meant to be its destroyer. When I made a, uh, uh, the comparison before, you know, Go Goku in, in some, uh, a lot of capacities, really, when you compare the two. Um, but the fact is, Clark has that nightmare of, yeah, the alien invaders coming in and killing Jimmy and Lois, and he's not fast enough to save them. Um, that helplessness, especially, uh, this is a situation where it's like, right, unlike the Superman and Lois situation, Clark couldn't help in that situation because it wasn't something he could punch his way out of. This is something he can punch his way out of, but the problem is he feels like he's personally responsible. It's like my species came here to like conquer the human race, and that's what I was meant to be. I was meant to be this world's conqueror, and so the fact is that I just don't know how I'm... You know, and so what does he do? He goes to the ship and he confronts his dad. They still can't understand each other, but it's like his dad can understand him, but he can't understand the Kryptonian. And it's like, I don't care what you want to do, what I was meant here to do. You try and take over this planet, I will stop you because I'm going to be this planet's protector. And you can see the look on his dad of like, that's not why we sent you here, but there's still so much we don't know about the Kryptonians in this particular continuity. I don't think Jarrell had that intention, but it does beg the question of, I mean, once again, this has done something so unique with his ship. Once again, it's a it's a it's a single small ship that Clark comes on the Earth in, but that grew into such a massive battleship. And it's like, well, what else would you need that battleship for? I guess it's like in case the human race tried to like fight him, and because I doubt Jor-El probably knew about. I mean, once again, I guess it depends on the continuity of how much he knew about Earth, about what the Yellow Sun could do a, to a Kryptonian. Did Jarrell know that ahead of time when he sent Clark to that Earth? Was it just a random planet? I'm sure maybe, depending on who's writing it, I'm sure different people have different interpretations of that. Like, whether there's a lot of meaning behind that, whether it's just Clark just randomly stumbled onto Earth, it wasn't even planned, or what, whether it was planned. Because I feel like some continuities have leaned into the fact that Earth was chosen, but I don't know... I feel like I vaguely remember there's some continuity that was like, no, they chose Earth because of the Yellow Sun and they knew what it would do because they wanted Earth, like Clark to go to that Earth. It's like, you could be this world champion that maybe they will herald you and like, you'll be, you'll be able to protect this, like be its kind of champion and you won't be an outsider. You'll be welcome and embraced. I feel like there's some continuity I remember watching that had that, but I, I could be full of it. But like I said, why else would you have like a battleship like that? Unless it's like, I guess it's meant to protect Clark from whatever dangers. Cause once again, and we don't know in this continuity what was Krypton's undoing because, like I said, it, it ranges from different things. It could be Brainiac or it could just be there was just some dying of the planet situation, kind of like how, you know, Earth's in the status and now with, like, uh, climate change and stuff that maybe just stuff like that happened on Krypton and it ended up dying for, as a byproduct of it. Or maybe, once again, it's just like, who knows who's directly responsible and who's not, you know? So we haven't really covered that yet, so that's still a big mystery that could correlate with everything that um, has happened, like Zero Day and everything that's happening around Clark, that could correlate, but we'll get to that later. Especially this is all coming at the worst time, considering, like, Clark is trying to double down on a normal life. It's like, right, I'm going to go to dinner with my parents and uh, Lois's dad and me and her and Jimmy are all going. So, like, the people most important to me are going to be here. So I need to, you know, it's like, right, Lois is reluctant to kind of have her dad over. It's just like, my dad's so him and I don't want you to meet him. I don't want him to kind of mess up what's going on right now. And Jimmy was acting so calm. I was like, oh, so Jimmy's just acting like everything's super calm and copacetic. But it's like, no, he's secretly freaking out. He's trying to keep everything copacetic for Clark. But apparently him and Lois in between episodes have talked about the spear. It's like, are you going to tell Clark about that? And it's like, no, he's already doubting himself enough, feeling bad, thinking he's this monster. So I, you know, we, we picked him up last episode, but we, and he's already got these concerns. I mean, he's even saying like, let's find the general because my species, like whatever they, whatever they might be preparing for this planet, regardless of my beef with the general, he wants the best for this planet. And that's what I want too. So enemies united by a single goal. So for him, it's like, I want to find the general and I need your guys help to do it because I think this might be the only way to protect this planet from my people 
But Lois is like, he's already going through so much. I don't want to add more to him when he's in such a fragile state right now. But for Jamie, it's like, oh, I don't want to keep any more secrets, especially like something, especially because they made such a promise of no more secrets. I mean, like our secrets kind of tore us apart before, but it's like, I know more. Um, and that gets complicated, you know, when it comes to dinner. And I'm, I love Mama and Papa King. I love uh, Jonathan just focusing on the turkey the entire time. And Martha, you know, it's, uh, you know, she's in love with Lois. It's like, you're the best. And she's even thankful because, and I thought it was such a sad thing um, when she's looking, when she shows pictures of Clark when he was younger. He was such an isolated kid because, you know, as we saw it in like episode two, we really saw it, how terrified he was of all this alien stuff. It scared him. That's why it took him all these years to finally, like, you know, now be like right i think i'm old enough now uh, i need to know what's going on if i want to like you know use these powers for good i got to find out who i am and so for clark he needed those answers after all these years he was finally i'm gonna put my fear aside and i'm gonna i'm gonna be brave and search for answers and so for him as a young kid he was so isolated because he was always too scared about his powers because that's so interesting because they had brought it up earlier like oh did you ever play sport like early in the season at some point they were referencing did he ever play sports he was like oh no and I was like interesting because obviously you even take Smallville he made such a big deal of wanting to play football in Smallville uh, but it seems like he was on a baseball team but he probably always like hindered himself heavily and even in that team photo it's the entire team together and there's he is off on his own because he was ever too Lois and Jimmy's probably the first person Clark has ever, I mean, even then he kind of kept the secret, but it's like, Jimmy's the closest friend he's had in probably his entire life. I mean, once again, we don't know about the Lana Lang of it all, because that wasn't really an element they've kind of introduced, so we don't know, like, what that was kind of really like. It might have been, I mean, considering everything, it might be a thing of he had a crush on her, and maybe she liked him, but he was completely oblivious to it, because he never knew how Lois felt about him, but he really liked her, you know, so considering the Clark that we've met in his continuity, you could definitely see a thing of like, he liked her, but never realized she liked him because he was, he was always keeping his distance from people. So the fact is they haven't really touched on that and maybe they won't in his continuity. I, I don't know. But then we get, you know, Clark, uh, I was kind of hoping we were going to get this moment. I might've even referenced it in a previous episode. Uh, I feel like I might have that. Yeah. That, that we were going to have a Spider-Man homecoming reveal of, Oh, Liz's dad is the vulture, and for for uh, Peter to be like, because it's the exact same situation. Because like Clark's like, oh what? Oh hey, he's like, yeah. Um, and so he's like, yo, come in, uh, Mr. Lane. It's like, that's General Lane, and like Clark was so freaked and kind of like, whoa, it's you that he, you know, very like classic guess who's coming to dinner type of situation but like he ended up crushing the doorknob and he's not trying to tell Lois because it's like how do you tell your girlfriend like hey so you know that sociopath that like literally sent a whole bunch of super villains after me and been trying to kill me and even captured and tortured me yeah that was your dad it's like right you especially knowing now like you have such a tumultuous relationship with your dad like how can I really break that to you and I love that he's like picking apart everything about Clark it's like so what do you do for a living Clark do you have any hobbies and this and that and I love mama can't be like well my son just saved the entire uh it's a whole bunch of money when I went to go pick up some stuff from the store, because she was ready, like, don't talk back to my son. I love it. Because so, Clark's like, what do you do when someone you don't, someone doesn't really like you? I mean, really hate you. She's like, I get it. Sam Lane, he's a, he's a lot. But you can't really, like, hate your girlfriend's dad, even when he, uh, it, even despite all the stuff he says about your perfect son. I'm like, I love Martha being Clark's number one cheerleader. That's super adorable. Her getting miffed, being like, oh, how dare he talk about my perfect son like that. I love it. And I love the entire time Jonathan's just sitting in front of the stove, just waiting. Just, you know, it's like, this turkey, got to keep an eye on it. And I love that everyone's passing around Jimmy when he shows up and he's so happy. And I love that uh, Clark's like, oh my God, Jimmy, Lo Lois's dad is the general. And Martha being like, Jimmy, we got to do something about it. Like Sam, he's a lot. I just, I, I want. The, I mean, oh my God, Lois is a saint. She's beautiful. She's amazing. She's great. But her dad, he's a, ooh, he's a lot. To have Jonathan pulling him over is like, yeah, this, this turkey ain't cooperating. Uh, it's just like Jimmy kind of being pulled in so many direct directions by everybody. Um, Especially because he came with good news. I had skipped over it, but I, it, it's a monumental moment for our heroes to go from interns to full-blown journals. And I love that they have desks by themselves because it's like because of the article that uh, all three of them um, wrote together uh, that, that took part in. I mean, obviously Jimmy was like the photographer in it, but all of their names are on the article of the city saved Superman. And because of that, like they're now promoted to, and I love Cat and Home Dude and the, uh, um, 
like the the oh the reporting squad ends up kind of congratulating them and like I said they're got desks beside each other it's it's they're there like uh, Lois is finally like no longer just the intern she gets to be a full blown journalist now and I, I was like I thought that was so beautiful and sweet it's like yes after everything it, it's kind of finally coming out uh coming up roses for them in this situation. And everyone's so happy and proud of him. And even Lois has that little plaque of like, oh yeah, like Lois Lane, future uh, award-winning journalist or something like that. But either way, like Jimmy was tired of all the secrets. So it's like, right, Lois, you need to tell Clark the truth. Clark, you need to tell Lois the truth. But then the spear came out. And for Clark, it's just like, for him, it's like, right, he's got the general there in his face. And now it's like, jeez, I... Now it's just, like, now it's staring me in the face of like, right, this is another version of me from the multiverse who's straight up evil. And it's just like, like, I mean, is this really what I'm capable of? I mean, I know I'm capable of the power and destruction. I mean, that might have been my my reasoning for being here, but the kryptonite inside of it heavily weakens him and that activates the ship. So it is, the techno technology is based around him and is connected to him, but there's still so much we don't know about it because it doesn't seem like... It doesn't seem like Jarrell could had any control over that ship situation. I guess it's kind of like autonomous, like he's part of like a separate AI system or something. But for him, I think it's a situation of it, the ship activate activated that way because of the kryptonite. I think it's such an interesting thing to make it. It's not only Kryptonians, Clark, that is weak to the kryptonite. Anything Kryptonian related, even their technology. I guess there's some maybe like some organism aspect of their technology for like because i was like i i don't i've never seen that come up before in any like superman continuity i'm familiar with that's ever tackled that kryptonian technology because that hasn't ever really been tackled too much but kryptonian technology being affected by kryptonite is so interesting that's why i wonder why why is that because i guess like i can make the ju justification of like okay Cause I didn't, I don't know if I've ever really known the reason why kryptonite works on Kryptonians the way it does. Like, why is a piece of your own planet, like, is it like, is it because your planet was radiated and the effect? Cause I, 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 I'm wondering, like, is it specifically Kryptonians that have been touched by the yellow sun? Is it, does it do something to the radiation in their body? Cause that's what the red sun completely zaps them of all the solar energy. So that's why, like, they're basically human. But like a kryptonite could also weaken Clark in a state where all his powers are drained from him as well. So it can work in the same balance. But obviously the red kryptonite doesn't have the crippling effect and the deadly effect that a green kryptonite can. So that's why I'm wondering like I've never actually really thought about it too much about like what effect does kryptonite actually have on like how does it affect kryptonians. Like I said is it like a, the radiation for krypton being destroyed does that counteract the yellow sun's radiation and that's what's actually killing them. It's because it's draining it specifically from the body, and it's it's like a poison, sure. But and why why does kryptonite work? That's probably something that has been covered in the comics, but I don't ever remember any. Once again, I'm not versed in the comics. I'm only versed in like the TV shows, but I don't know if any show. And do correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think any show has ever really gone into the ends and out. It's just kind of a accepted thing of kryptonite works on kryptonians, and that's it. You don't really deep dive into like how does that work. I'm sure there's some writer that has tackled that in the comics over to like. 80 plus years Superman's been a thing. I mean, who knows how much of that time Kryptonite's been around, you know? I wonder how far into Superman's run, like, since since his inception, when did Kryptonite appear? Was it early days in the run, or was it years later? Like, he didn't learn to... He wasn't flying in the comics until... Wasn't it, like, 39? Or something like that? Because it started off in a radio show. That's why leaping um, a building in a single bound was so important because he initially couldn't fly. He started flying in a radio show first and then they incorporated that in the comic books. Tangents and all that aside. But yeah, because of the ship and the technology tra uh, tracing like the kryptonite, it ends up going in attack mode and... The general kind of goes in attack mode too and calls for backup. I thought the fact is he didn't get backup immediately. I'm like, are they kind of, is Amanda kind of screwing with him? But it's like, no, just, I guess maybe the ship signal was making it so it couldn't really get out to him or something. Or maybe they were trying to, I, I don't know, maybe the ship kind of blacked any, black, blocked out any attempt to kind of reach backup. But yeah, Lois in that moment is like, wait, it's you. You're part of all of, the, like, wait, how do you know about all this? You know, because... Especially because they had their moment earlier where it's like, 
oh, you haven't even read my article. Wait, you're mad because I'm a fan of Superman? Like, no, he helped save the city and stuff like that. He's like, yeah, but he's not who you think he is. And so for her, it's just like, right, we're back to this again. Of like, you're you're so focused on your military time, you've got no time for me. Especially because, well, we don't, you'd assume she has a sister. It hasn't come up in this continuity whether or not Lucy exists in this continuity or not. But it's like, and it, she hasn't referenced her, so she might be an only child in this continuity, you know? Uh, maybe her and her sister have a complicated relationship and they haven't really brought that up, but it's like she doesn't really have anyone, you know, in the family that, you know, she can rely on that we're aware of, at least when it comes to her dad and, you know, her mom being going and everything. Clark wants to do everything he can to actually help because it's like, no, this is my responsibility. This technology is based around me. This is my people trying to evade. I need to stop it from happening, especially because it started tearing open a portal, which I thought was so interesting because I kept being under the misconception of like, oh, that's like a multiverse thing. That's, that's a Superman from another continuity, like another dimension. It's like, no, it's not. It's not a rip in time. Well, I'm sure it's a rip in space. And I'm sure because of the whole space travel of it all, there is like time and space does play a role in space travel, not just time travel, but like the light years you need to like travel and warp speed to another like point. But yeah, they're from a, it's, it's the same universe. It's not like, oh, this is from universe 55. It's like, no, it's from this universe. It's just a different planet. It's a different section of space they're in. They might be in another, I mean, galaxy for all we know, but yeah, it's just, it's the same universe, just in different galaxy, and they just end up, um, traveling here through space, and the ship is coming through, and they end up finding out, that once again, about the kryptonite, and so Clark is willing to sacrifice himself, because it's like, this is up to me, this is my responsibility for Lois, it's like, you shouldn't have to sacrifice yourself to try and stop all this, but he, you know, and that's Superman for you, it's like, I gotta do this. I gotta do the right thing, especially when he believes it's his own fault. And goes full steam ahead into the ship, pushing it into the stratosphere. The robots are following him. He bursts into the ship, going toe to toe with the robots, getting his ass handed to him a little bit. But then his father shows up as a hologram and ends up helping him out a lot. And uh, Clark pushes through, like starts smashing and ripping through everything, pushing himself. Like, he's pretty banged up. Once again, this isn't the invincible Superman that everyone kind of complains about. He's still a fledgling in all of this. Taking the kryptonite. And I think that's such an interesting thing that they've kind of done over the course of, like, Superman continuities. Where kryptonite doesn't completely debilitate him. It does, but it's it's a process that is, like, if he pushes it with enough willpower, Clark's able to push through it and kind of use a little bit of whatever strength he has left. So he sees, which I think it's interesting that the core of the ship seemed like it looked like it was made from kryptonite too, but it looked like it was red. But maybe that's just an aesthetic thing. It just, maybe it wasn't even, it maybe it's just like a red crystal. Maybe it had nothing to do with it. But Clark kryptonite in hand which i think i talked about in that episode seven i really like the aesthetic choice of making it so that like it not only makes his veins go green it literally crystallizes his skin and if he's prolonged to it it will kill him like it did the robots where i mean granted maybe because they aren't organic they can like reboot themselves after getting away from the kryptonite just like clark can eventually he'll be fine from it makes me wonder do they feed off their solar energy too once again, just I'm asking a million different questions. I'm so sorry, but it just stuff like that is so interesting to me, and I'm curious. But he infects the rest, of the core of the ship with the kryptonite, and as he's kind of passing out, his dad's there to kind of like, "Hey, you're gonna be okay." Once again, still can't understand his dad, but it's like I just I had to stop you because I need to protect my home. And for Jarrell, you see that look on his face. It's like, right, you don't, you know, your home isn't here with me and your mom and Krypton. It's it's here understandable you were a baby when we sent you here but i love putting him in this ship and the parallels and just him touching clark and it's like be safe kyle my son uh be safe and having to send him off again as the ship's exploding because the ai is tied to that which i'm like oh are, is he not going to have Jarrell in his life in this or is he going to pick up a piece of like some technology because because I wonder this, and other people had wonder, are they going to make the ship his Fortress of Solitude? So what if he takes remnants of it? Because there was a piece of the ship that was coming through that got sliced off when the portal closed. So not less remnants of that. I was wondering, like, could there be, like, a little bit of, like, the crystal left and makes his own Fortress of Solitude where that's where Jarrell kind of remains? Because it's kind of sad because, well, Clark doesn't have his father anymore in Superman and Lois. I mean, in both capacity, because John's going, Jonathan Kent is going... It's also his mom's going in that continuity as well. But also, uh, Jarrell was destroyed, so he can't like he doesn't have Jarrell in his life anymore. Granted, that's an older Superman, so he's been he's like in his forties, so he's been Superman for a while. 
Um, and so you can, uh, so his mom kind of popped up in the continuity. Slight spoilers for Superman and Lois, if if, if you care about spoilers, at, at least in that combat. I, I'm not going into the how and why it happened, but he has his mom. She kind of fills that void of like no Jarrell because he hasn't had Jarrell like he lost Jarrell like at the three fourth point of the first season of Superman and Lois. So uh I, i'm de- i can't especially when clark knows nothing about krypton there's no way they're going to make the jarrell being gone in this continent once again that's a continuity where he's been superman for a while he's learned everything from jarrell there's a lot he knows he still has jarrell helping him you know stuff with jonathan but that's about it he knows all that he needs to know um so i and especially with this Clark not having a fortress of solitude like there has to be like that has to kind of tie up at some point in time and come back around because there's still so much he doesn't know. He has so many. Cause even we don't know. I'm like, did they send him to be like a conqueror like Goku was sent to Earth? Or was it just meant to protect him? Just to, like did, once again, did they know about the Yellow Sun or not? Like, did they send this battleship? Like, could it be like the ship? had a mind of his own and it grew and advanced on its own because it's like oh was it because it attacked Clark because Clark was attacking it so it doesn't see him as like a like we're bound to you because like it read it registers your DNA you know that isn't just a oh the task force s did that you know no that's just the base of what that technology is it's connected to Clark and it registered him but it doesn't see him as an I like it sees him as a threat so it reacts to him um that could also play in a role in what happened to Krypton. It could just be like, and that's why I also said it could play into Brainiac, especially if you're dealing with alien tech. It's like, it's got to be Brainiac. So it could be like a thing of he had something to do with the tech going wild and it just, maybe an AI sits, maybe it could lead to the birth of uh, Brainiac or maybe it's just the technology just went off on its own and went wild on an AI thing without it turning into a Brainiac situation. Like I said, there's so much we don't know in this continuity that it's just me throwing, like, throwing stuff at the wall to see what sticks. My whole point of it is just like he doesn't know enough, and I just don't see that being the end of Jarrell, at least for now. But how they would potentially bring that back would be interesting. But uh, Clark's in a weakened state, and General Lane saw this as an opportunity to put him down. But Lois gets in front of him. It's like he's not the person you think he is. He risked his life to save your life, my life, everyone's life, despite everything, you know? So please, like, for once in your life, listen to me and trust me on this. And trying to do right by his daughter he listens to her and does and tells Amanda Waller like right I was miss I was confused I'm like well how are you going to handle that about like the giant piece of the spaceship I guess like Clark will break that down and scatter it so it won't draw attention to Smallville but the next thing you know Lois turns back around and her dad's going so her dad's probably going to be avoiding her for a while so she's not going to be able to get any straight answers out of him but I appreciate, like, right, we had quite the crazy thing, but it's like, hey, let's, we're together, we're all alive, uh, especially because he had that sweet moment where it's like, especially when his dad, because I think it's a neat parallel of episode two, where it's like, oh, you know, a boy ends up digging up his alien spaceship or something, like his dad had that offhand joke about that, for it to kind of come back around where it's like, hey, Clark, you're, uh, you can't go up against that ship, it's massive, what are you going to do? His Martha had to be like, he's our son, he's Superman, he'll be okay. All we have to do is trust in him. And they hugged him. And I was like, that's so beautiful. Like, okay, we we got we support you, son. We believe in you. And so them having their dinners, like the turkey didn't cooperate. So Clark had to laser it. And I love the whole thing. Of, oh, yeah, Jimmy, you want to bring up some good news? What was it? He's like, oh, yeah, the Daily uh, the Daily Planet ended up buying Firebird. So for like five point some million dollars. So I'm kind of rich now. It's like, wait, what? I like, love the casual drop of that at the end of the episode. That was a nice little pin on top of it but it sets up so much of task force x especially because it's not the general it's not sam running it anymore and i I was curious whether or not i mean and i think that's important to note too lois never revealed it about clark's situation even though the general kept being like why do you seem so familiar have we met before kid like but you know it's like do you always wear glasses like he he was on the cusp of it but i was curious whether lois was like you can't hurt him i love him and it's like wait what it's like yeah like she but she knows like right considering you're going after superman i can't trust you especially like, even in this moment like oh thank you for doing that dad but it's like she knows he's not fully on their side he's conflicted because he's torn between his duties as a military man and doing what he believes is right for his country for his planet so but he's torn between that and 
wanting to do right by his daughter and listening to her for the first time in his life, even though he's never really done it. You know, because he also brought up the whole thing of like, yes, she's, she's successful. Whatever she's successful in, it doesn't really matter what it is. She's going to be succeeding in it because that's what the lanes do. That's what we do. We succeed. We excel at what we do. But he never took the time away from his work to really dive into her passion as a journalist and what she's written, especially because she that article got her a full blown. It's like I'm not even an intern anymore; I'm a full blown reporter now. But you couldn't even take the time to read my article. Once again, he's got a lot on his plate. But but yeah, like the fact is, they didn't tell Sam. He'll find out eventually, but he still doesn't know Clark Kent and Superman are the same. And like I said, I think it speaks volumes. Lois knows not to bring that secret up right now because he can't now doubling down with him disappearing. It's like. Yeah, we don't know where his allegiance is fully like because he is torn between both sides of himself in that regard, between the being the general and between being Lois' father. So that was fascinating. But then we kind of pick up on the other side with the portal. And like I said, I thought this was a dimensional thing, but considering how it all played out, I was like, oh, it's not a dimension thing. It's another planet. So I wonder, is that supposed to be kind of like, it's like, it looks like Kryptonian tech, but it is like Kryptonian armor. So... One person is like, oh, we saw a planet that seems rebellious, like they're willing to fight back. They did years ago, and they're still fighting us back now. I don't think, they don't know about Clark. They don't know that that planet has a Kryptonian. And the moment the guy's like, oh, it doesn't matter, and he turns around, he's like, they'll kneel regardless. And I was like, when we hear those words kneel, you're just, when you hear the word kneel, you can't help but think, wait, is this a Zot? Is that what that's supposed to be? Like, because it's interesting because they came to the planet 22 years ago, but because I was wondering about because they're they're invading another planet, which I was like, is that what they've been doing for the past 22 years? They've been around conquering every other planet like along the in the solar system, maybe because typically I feel like most continuities Zod and his people are locked in a phantom zone when Krypton goes kablooey. And so that's why they get there well after Clark's already become Superman, typically. So now I'm wondering, is that why they haven't technically made it to Earth yet? I mean, they were on their way, on the cusp of making their way to Earth. But it has to be somewhere with, like, that's why I'm most, now I'm like, but wherever it was has to have a yellow sun for them to be like, oh, I mean, maybe that's not even, maybe that's not Kryptonians. Maybe that is just some, like, rogue tech. Uh, maybe those aren't people under that armor, but then you would assume like, but the Neil makes me think like, oh, it's got to be Zod, right? Zod and his people. So it seems like, is that the direction we're going with that? They're out conquering every other planet. And then eventually, like, they now know like, oh, there's a planet that, oh, push, kind of sort of pushed us back twice now. Like, we've had issues twice with this planet. Like, we couldn't find it, like, 22 years ago. But now, because the portal opened up, like, now we maybe is, it was open long enough. And because of that piece of the ship, they now can probably pinpoint Earth and her head there directly. So, like I said, I thought this was a dimensional thing. And maybe it still is. And maybe it's not the space thing. Like, like I said, that seemed like that was just a different planet. Because the buildings look different. But that could just be like, a, no, that is a different world. So I don't think it is Clark. I think that might be just straight up Zod. If it is still the same universe and that's just a different place in space, a different solar system, galaxy, whatever, that might be Zod. If it's a different dimension, maybe it is a different Clark. I don't quite know. I should also bring this up. I know, I'm not going to... I'm going to take this theory and it's it's not my own theory. I was watching the real rejects because, you know, obviously I didn't watch episode 10 yet and obviously the most recent upload was... um. 8, 9, and 10, and it's Koi and John watching, and Koi brought up something so interesting. The guy that worked for Dr. Ivo Parasite, his name is Alex. Koi threw out there, what if that's Lex Luthor? I was like, shut up. Because he typically, once again, he I made a whole point about that when I was talking about Harley Quinn's episode this week. He's typically a redhead a lot of times when they kind of depict him, so I don't know if that's tri typical to him in the comics or not. But I was like, I mean... I mean, it could just be like, oh, he's some tool bag named Alex. But it's like, yeah, we're dealing with a younger Superman. Could easily be dealing with a younger... Le but would he just be like an assistant to Ivo? You know, I mean, we, I mean, maybe the Lex family, the Luther family isn't what it, I, once again, that was just a theory that Koi had, but I was like, that's so interesting, like, could he be Lex? Because we don't know, you know, because not every character is exactly who they traditionally are in, in the comics or any other version of the character. You know, they're doing their own thing with them, so... That's the interesting thing of like, there's still so much we don't know. Like I said, time and time again, I've got so many questions because there's so many exciting things about, well, how do things work in this continuity? What exists? What doesn't exist? Uh, 
Is still is Mixie still running around? Did the League of Loises find him? I mean, they haven't found their way back to this earth yet, but I mean, that could always be a possibility with this whole situation. So they're very anti-Superman. Task Force X is, I mean, don't even have to worry about a multiversal Lois, League of Loises to have an issue with, with Clark. You have an entire, you already have a whole government task force that wants you dead, you know, in this continuity. So got enough on your plate. Now you add in like, oh, there might be another group that's going to be coming to the planet. You're going to have to defend the earth from so i had heard news a little while back first and foremost the show is coming back for a second season i had heard that a little while back when the show was probably about halfway through the season that it already got renewed apparently ahead of time the show was already ordered for like a don't strike that i was about to say the network the network that said show is airing it was uh had already ordered two seasons of the show now that doesn't mean jack squad especially considering that the network that this cha uh show is airing on is under a certain company's umbrella and they they along with a lot of people have kind of nicked some stuff in the bud even stuff that's in production like oh yeah we ordered another season of this but part way through we decided like oh let's cut it there it's like you better not do that. That's happened a little too much for my liking, especially from this company, like, dumping stuff for tax reasons. You know, without mentioning them by name. I, I'll go ahead and, like, Warner Brothers does that. Like, that's some bullshit they've done recently, and I, I'm not a fan of that. I really hate... A most recent example I found out about was, like, Snowpiercer. It was on TNT, which is under the Warner Brother umbrella. It's some horse shit they've been doing, and sadly, other companies have been doing it. At least, like, removing stuff from streaming and whole... It's a whole thing. How do I recommend you look into it? But I'm, I hope they don't screw over this show. It's on adult swim but it's still a thing of that is still under the warner brothers umbrella and like i said with the the um snowpiercer of all snowpiercer's fourth and final season is literally done there's just nowhere to air it because tnt was like no we're not going to air it and you can't find the other episodes like streaming wise because you know it's a tax write-off like the batgirl situation as well as other things have been it's just infuriating and so i don't want my adventures with superman to become that because i really love the show i think it's a great uh turn on like um not even just 100 bit twi twist but like take on the superman continuity and canon and just showing it in a new fun anime style approach and way and i'm so excited uh it seems like it is going to get another 10 episode season so i'm excited to see what season two has in store for us uh what answers we get what villains we get because we also have to i also forgot most of the villains are still out there like most of the kind of pseudo suicide squad uh they had because um Heatwave, Banshee, Kyle, home dude that's with them, um, and um, Livewire are still out there. The only one that got captured was Ivo. So they're still out there. So that's a potential threat. But what other villains will we get? What other characters will we, will we get introduced to? Um, I'm very, very excited for season two. I'm, 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 I cannot wait. Obviously, animation takes a while, so it's probably going to be a while, especially with the strike going. So however long we have to wait... I'll wait, but I, I'm really excited to see what season two has in store for us with my adventures with Superman. But really, that's all I wanted to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good night.